Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's and St. James live on Facebook because we are that trendy. I now can't see anyone, but I'm guessing people are going to be logging on. Welcome, good morning. Oh, there's a couple of people. Well, one. <laughs> good morning. I can't see who you are. My eyes are terrible. Good morning, guys. A few more, a few more. Morning, Vicky Drees, and us. Oh, the hunts. Oh, the hunts. Bonjour, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Oh, Jeff and Sue. I'm guessing. Jane, Jean. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> Just so you know, I can't actually see the names because my sight is terrible. So Sarah is hiding next to the phone, feeding me the names. Your and, is watching. Eh? Your yeah, I know. And uh, she's feeding me the names and I'll get very... So Jean, I'm sorry, you were Jane or something for a minute, but you're now Jean. Jennifer, morning Jennifer. I saw Paul there as well. Mike, the Pilditches, welcome, good morning. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Good morning, David, Emma, Martha, the Endertons. Morning, Gail. How are you doing? We're just giving it a few minutes to let people join. Good morning, Jenny. Hi, uh, that's Sarah's mum, by the way. If anyone is there wondering who Jenny Yule is, that's Sarah's mum. So say hi to Sarah's mum. If you need to grass her up for anything. <laughs> Morning Linda. Just gonna give it a few more minutes, let people join. Morning Pam. Oh Harry and Eve, Barbara Bowman, I can see there. Good morning everyone. Welcome to our 10 o'clock service. Oh, I think Emma's, Emma said John and Eileen are, are watching as well. That's awesome. Welcome John and Eileen, if you are watching. Sandra, Terry, morning. Well, I presume Sandra and Terry, it might be Sandra and Terry's like banished somewhere else. But who knows? Just to say be ready because I've got a couple of uh, energetic songs for those who can or well, even if you can't stand there's no reason why you can't wiggle where you are. Morning Matt. I've already teed up the Dreeses and some others as well to be ready. I need some support. Morning Vic and Eileen. Oh, morning Jackie. And maybe Ruth. Maybe John. I don't know. Get a one minute warning. <laughs> hey Jenny, morning. Oh, uh, there's Terry. There's Terry, so I'm just letting him watch. It's good. Morning, Matthew Lyon. Morning, Shirley. You know, you've reached a point where I didn't realise I was this blind. Morning everyone. I'm sure more people are going to be joining us as well as we go. Hey, the Sawyers, good morning. Sawyer kids, all the any children watching, be prepped. I'm I'm gonna do some dancing, so you need to, you know. Help me. Oh, well, and adults, yeah, as well. Okay, so, good morning, we're gonna make a start. So, uh, welcome to St. John's and St. James, live on Facebook. And, um, oh, uh, Emma's saying something, I can't quite pick that up, sorry. Oh, no, it's, I think it's about John and Arnie. Um, 
so yeah live on facebook welcome everyone and so we're going to lead us through uh, some worship just our time of worship that we have been doing over the last few weeks myself and sarah and um and then after this service as usual there'll be a talk posted and i think this week's by david so that will be going uh, on the page straight after but let's start with a prayer so father god thank you lord that we can meet in this way thank you lord that we can meet in all kinds of different ways lord in it in physical lord when we meet in our churches when we meet in our homes lord thank you that we can meet in a spiritual way when we pray together lord and you unite us with your spirit and thank you lord that we can meet now in this digital way this this way that helps us to be together even though we're not always we can't be physically together so we just praise you lord that even in a time like this you have made a way you are a god of provision we thank you lord in jesus name amen so we're going to start with well i say start we already started but we're going to go into our easter acclamation hopefully most of you if not all of you would have got the order of service from uh david sent over last night if you haven't check your email but the acclamation through Easter time, which is over the next uh, couple of weeks, continues uh, right up to Ascension and uh, Pentecost. But this acclamation has been used for centuries and we've been using it over the last few weeks. I will say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And then you will respond wherever you are, as loud as you can. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we're going to do that three times. And we're going to start off a bit softer. And we're going to get progressively louder. By the third time, you'll be declaring it as loud as you can. Okay, so Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Woo! Yes. Now, in, the, in, in, in some notes, there's usually party poppers. I don't know if you've run out of party poppers now, but if you've got them, use them. So he's risen indeed. So now we're going to go into our time of worship. This is where all the high energy people and low energy people, anyone, wherever you are, is going to get an opportunity to dance a little bit and move. It's like our, it's like our uh, exercise for the day. Government prescribed. And also by Jesus.
Thank you, all my fans, all my sponsors, especially the Church of England, for putting me in such a privileged position. Thanks. Um, great. 
So uh, for those of you who know me, know that I love the gym, but I hate cardio. So I'm going to go and have a rest and we're going to have a short reflection. I dare to even look at the comments and I'm going to pass over to Sarah who's going to come and speak something that God's been putting on her heart. Morning everyone. I really hope you enjoyed that just as much as I did. <laughs> um, I don't think Lycra could have made it any better. I probably think it could have made it worse, but that was good. Um, so Alan's very kindly allowed me to just share something that's been on my heart this week. And it's just a short reflection about hope. Um, and Alan and I watched um, the film Just Mercy this week, which is about the civil rights lawyer, Brian Stevenson, um, who helps people who've been incarcerated for crimes that they haven't committed and some of those people have been on death row um, and these are people who've been let down by the justice system that has been designed to protect them and who are waiting for an appeal and for the justice to be wronged and it's such a powerful and an emotional film and Anne and I'm very blessed that we've uh, he heard Brian Stevenson speak before as well and just as much, you know, powerful and emotional hearing him speak about the, the stories that he's, he was able to share. But it made me think that whilst we may not have experienced that level of injustice, how often do we actually feel wronged or feel like we're waiting for that justice or for the wrong to be corrected? And how do we actually behave in that waiting? Do we hold on to the offence of the injustice or do we turn the other cheek? Have we lashed out in anger and offence or have we tried to make peace with the situation? And the thing is, we know what Jesus would do because we read about the hope and the peace that he held on to right the way through his human life with us. And right when he was laying on the cross, battered and bruised in unimaginable pain he said father forgive them for they know not what they do and I just wonder can we speak this out as confidently as he did seeking forgiveness for our enemies just as the injustice continues around us so in this time of waiting whilst we may be restricted in our movements let us not be restricted in our reflection and this week I've certainly recognised the importance of having peace in the waiting. And in my own reflection, I've certainly recognised as well that I've probably been offended too quickly. I've recognised my own brokenness alongside the brokenness of others. So let's use this time of reflection together to maybe be challenged by God about some of these situations. Because we are all broken by something. We've all hurt someone just as much as we have also been hurt. We all share the condition of our brokenness, even if our brokenness isn't equivalent. What I mean by this is we all know what it's like to be hurt and to feel broken, even if our experiences may be different. That's why we can show empathy towards others. But our brokenness is also a source of common humanity. It's also the brokenness that Jesus felt. The basis for our shared search for comfort, meaning and healing comes from sometimes being hurt and broken. And our shared vulnerability and imperfection nurtures and sustains our capacity for compassion. If we cannot recognise the brokenness around us, how can we show compassion for it? And there's a picture circulating on social media at the moment about a boat in a storm. And it has the wording that whilst we may be in the same storm, we're not on the same boat. And this is a great picture to remind us of the empathy and compassion needed, especially through this time of suffering and physical isolation. But let's not forget that it was Jesus that calmed the storm. He is on our boat, even if we're not sharing the boat with others at the moment. So let's not use that analogy to put up any barriers or to become defensive by proving that our lives are harder than other people's or to justify removing ourselves from being compassionate towards others. 
because what unites us is stronger than what divides us, even if it is brokenness. So we may be in different boats, but we are at the moment all in the same storm. So let's make a choice whilst we are in these boats. We can deny our brokenness, renounce compassion, and as a result, deny our own humanity. Or we can embrace our humanness, which means embracing our broken natures and the compassion that remains our best hope for healing. So let's not be restricted in our time of reflection and let's be open to God's challenge, recognising that he can bring the meaning of Jesus to people's lives through us and how we act and respond through this time. Because all we need to do is show compassion and comfort, even if it's from our own boats. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thanks so much. And I thought it was a powerful word when Sarah told me about it. And I thought, yeah, that's uh, right for a time such as this. And building off the back of that to affirm our faith, as we often do, as a way of uh, declaring that, I suppose, like Jesus, uh, like Jesus said. I mean, you know, Sarah, but, you know, you call her Jesus. Whatever. But, uh, but like Sarah was saying, Jesus is in our boat. This is a way of declaring that we know that and we believe it. So let's declare our faith together. I'll say a statement and if you agree with it, say we believe and trust in him. So do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. And do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. So this is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So now I'm just going to have a short time of prayer. Um, so I'm kneeling, I know it probably looks very holy, and it is, but um, mainly so I can see things. But uh, we said, you know, if you've got prayers or reflections or anything that you'd like us to read out in these services, um, please do. Whether it's a prayer for yourself, a prayer for others, a prayer of, of joyfulness or even a prayer of despair, do send it over. And I have had one such prayer request this week from Paul Goodbody. Uh, to pray for Paul and his and his wife Joe and their family as they're going through some difficult times, as we all are, but they're particularly struggling in, in various ways and we've all got our own personal challenges. So I'm going to pray for Paul and Joe and their family, but anyone else as well, we'll, we'll lift up together. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, even in the midst and despair of the the storm. Thank you, Lord, that you are on our boat. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much, that you came to save us, to love us, to be with us. Thank you, Lord, that your whole movement towards creation has, has taken place right from the beginning, Lord, that you have always wanted to be with us and that you love us so much you just won't let us go. We thank you, Lord, that even in times like this we can trust in you, Lord. Thank you that the hope of Christ is bigger than life and death, is bigger than what we can imagine, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that that hope is, is beyond imagination. Lord, we pray for our world, for what is going on right now, Lord, in terms of this virus, COVID-19, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would bring it to, a, to an end, that you would squash out this virus and that you would heal all those, Lord, that are suffering at this time. And we know, Lord, that your healing looks different for each one of us. But we pray, Lord, that you would bless those that are struggling, that you would bless our world leaders as they make decisions. And we know some of those decisions haven't quite been uh, uh, well executed at times. 
and we know that that can provoke anger but we just pray against that anger lord we just pray that we would see our leaders as those who are trying to tackle something which they could have never foreseen and i just pray lord that you would uh that you would bless them in the decisions that they are making for those who are coming out of lockdown and worried about a second wave for those that are trying to make contingency plans and for what might happen and what will happen and even those that are planning for easing the lockdown we just pray lord that there will be wise decision making and even in our own frustrations of just wanting to get out including me lord we pray that we would be patient as these decisions are made lord that we wouldn't put ourselves or others in danger but we would be our brothers and our sisters keepers as you commanded right back in genesis so we just pray your blessing over our world leaders, Lord, those we like and those we don't like. Lord, we are all children of you. So we just pray your wisdom and knowledge and peace over them, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for those around the world that are suffering for various reasons, and that may not include this virus. Still poverty happens, still starvation, still people fleeing from war, still people dying for all kinds of reasons, Lord, still people picking up the pieces after various disasters, still our world is in all kinds of need, Lord, not just from this particular thing. So we just pray for all those that are struggling and suffering in this time, whatever it is that they're struggling with, Lord, we pray that they would know your presence right next to them. They would know that you are in their boat. Father God, we just pray for our own church family. We pray for our local area, for our local councillors and our local government, for Andrew Rosendahl and Damien White and for all those, Lord, that are, in, that are serving at this time. Lord, again, regardless of our own opinions of different people, we just do pray for them, Lord. They are still our, our brothers and sisters in, in Christ. Lord, I pray for Paul Goodbody, Lord, and, and Joe and for that family. I just ask, Lord, that you would bless them particularly as they're going through this difficult time, Lord, and their own personal circumstances, struggling in various ways, Lord. We just pray that you would again remind them that you are right there in their midst, that you have not left, you have not gone anywhere, that you are closer than ever, Lord. You are as close as close can be. We just pray your blessing over that family. We pray, Lord, your blessing over every family, every uh, person, every child, adult, right up from any age, um, those who turned 100 last week and those all the way down to just newborns, Lord. We just pray your comfort and peace over all those, Lord, that are, that are trying to work out what life looks like in this time and what it might look like beyond. So we just ask your Holy Spirit to unite us again as your church. And as I bring prayers to an end, I'm just going to pray from this book that David's been using. It's uh, Prayers in the Time of Covid. It's a, a, a little booklet given by the Church of England. So keep us good, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from the love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So why don't we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Um, say it in whatever version you know it. So our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so we are now going to have our final time of worship <coughs> and you might be thankful to know I'm not going to be dancing again and this is, uh, oh, this is more of a sit-down song for me. So let's worship together. So those of you that did receive um, David's email uh, we're going to
uh, you've got the words on there. But if you didn't, don't worry. We're going to be singing 10,000 Reasons or Bless the Lord, you know, depending on how you know it, by Matt Redman. So it's, it's a well-known song, so I'm sure you'll be able to join in with this. God, as we come to the end of our time, Lord, we do worship your holy name. We bless you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to remind us that we are not alone through this crisis. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, even in the midst of despair. We thank you that you are a God of love and a God of hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to come to the end of this part of our service now. I'm just going to say a, a blessing and a little sending out. And then uh, I think David and Emma or David's going to upload his uh, talk onto the Facebook page. So keep an eye out for that. It's always good 
as well, even to do these services, gathering together to, to watch and listen to those talks. Remember, Tuesday uh, mornings, David and Emma lead uh, prayers, a uh, uh, common book of prayer type thing on, uh, daily prayer, sorry, on Facebook, on our Facebook page on Tuesday mornings. And I do the same on Thursday mornings. And then in the evenings, uh, David and I take it in turns to do some reflections. So do click into that because it's another way of even through the week to kind of uh, put spaces in our week. I'm sure you already are, but it's a good way, again, of connecting and joining in, listening to what God's saying. And I really encourage you, please do email me or email David with your thoughts and reflections. And we're going to try and find a way. We want everyone involved, everyone's voices to be heard. So please do send those encouragements or even how you're feeling. Even if it's terrible, send it to us so we can share it with a whole family. And let's be encouraging one another as well. So let's, let's do that. Just be listening to God, but don't keep it to yourself. If it's for everyone, share it with David or I, and then we can... I will talk about it with you or with the whole family. So I encourage you to receive this blessing. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and cherish now and forever. Amen. So let us remain in our homes and serve God in the ways that we can. We stay home to serve God and our neighbours in Jesus' name and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Great. So as I say, remember, tune in uh, Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings at 9am and then in the evenings at uh, Tuesday and uh, Thursday evenings at 5.15 uh, when we do our reflections i think i've got that right if i'm not i'm sure david will correct it over an email or something but um yeah so 9 a.m and 5 15 tuesdays and thursdays come and join us it'll be awesome god bless everyone